Well, hello, everyone. Um, apologies for the um, admitting you all late. Um, today here we, we oh, have... Um, today we are going to present a showcase, a successful example of collaboration between in industry leaders, Petrobras and IUCA. We are going to have Rodrigo Cochrane and Barbara Carpegiani from Petrobras. We've prepared a journey, uh, experience of incorporating meaningful wildlife-related objectives. One of their recent tabletop exercises by integrating the expertise of IUCA from the outset. Viviane Barquette from IUCA will share how integration of wildlife organizations into the exercise planning process and delivery is beneficial for all parts, not only demonstrating good practice, but resulting in valuable lessons learned. So I'm going to present um, the, the presenters. So we are going to have Rodrigo. Dr. Rodrigo Cochrane is an environmental and safety engineer with a doctorate in chemistry, specialized in oil spill response. He has more than 15 years of experience in Petrobras and serve as the technical senior technical advisor of the contingency, contingency and emergency response division under the HSE executive management. Rodrigo coordinates environmental and technological risk assessments, emergency plans, development, and coordinates actual response. He has participated in more than 60 emergence, emergencies and 100 exercises in upstream, midstream, and downstream segments, and provides technical advisory to Brazilian governments in this topic. Barbara Carpegiani is a biologist who graduated from UFSC, it's a federal university, uh, San Carlos, and is studying for a master in environmental science and technology from Univali. She has been an environmental analyst at Petrobras since 2004, focusing on projects of environmental monitoring of the marine environment, environmental impact assessment, and preparation and response to fauna. Viviane Barquette is an oceanographer, PhD in zoology from University of Cape Town in South Africa. She has been involved in wildlife rehabilitation since 1998, and she has been with IUCA since 2015, attending emergencies and exercises and dealing with preparedness, planning, and training. In addition, she is IUCA's second Gowers representative. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Rodrigo, Petro, um, Barbara, and Viviane. So we are going to start with the presentation. Um, Rodrigo, all yours. So first, um, the sake of Petrobras, uh, Mari, thank you, SRL, for inviting us. It's always a, a pleasure for, for our team to discuss technical issues with other people and to learn from other experiences. Uh, today, as Mari said, I'm going to present a, a study case. It's, it's the Ooh. same. Uh, same material, same presentation we discussed it last week in Houston, in Clean Gulf. So uh, plenty of good uh, discussions, and I hope we can also have them here. And I will go through all the general aspects of the exercise. And then, of course, because this, this topic of wildlife is here, our, our main focus, uh, I'm willing to have questions and to be able to to reply to them with Barbara's help, uh, since she was uh, one of our leaders in coordinating these efforts. Barbara, please feel free to, to join and comment in any minutes, okay? Well, so uh, we're going to, to just briefly understand what is the drilling project, what is the response structure that Petrobras has uh, put together for, for these projects, some of the operational challenges of the area, the exercise per se, and then some lessons that we learned uh, and we're still uh, collecting these impressions. So a lot of good experience. 
Okay, so about the drilling project, we are talking here about the northeast coast of Brazil. We have two, two we have the intention to drill two wells, uh, not very far from the coast, as we are used to doing the southeast, but uh, around 50 to 70 kilometers. It's uh, a very sensitive area. Uh, the northeast coast in general, you can say that about this. Lots of sensitivities that I will show you in a moment. And uh, there is a, a background, a very recent background, that there is an area that is an area that was impacted by the 2019 mystery spill in Brazil that I'm sure many of you have heard of. So this means this project had a lot of concern from not only Petrobras, but also the regulators and the society. And we need to demonstrate our response capability in order to, to assure everyone that uh, we are ready to to minimize the impacts that a, a big oil spill could happen, could could cause. And we expect the drilling to begin this this month. So we'll be in this area for the next six to six months, nine months maybe. And just mention that there's a area that's very uh, known by the company because we had some operations there back in the past. Okay, so. Uh, these are some of the uh, key features, I think, of this environment. Uh, the Northeast has a very strong uh, traditional population presence. So lots of fishermen and communities. Uh, um, most of the income of the coastal uh, cities come from not only the traditional fishery, but also the, the industrial fishery, some uh, sea farms and also tourism. So, all of the all of these sensitive elements to oil spills. We have also a, a large presence of wildlife, as is very common in all our country. But in this in this specific area, we have a a, a very high concern about the presence of manatees. Uh, this area is is certainly in the hot spot of the country in this aspect. And there are some sensitivities that I, I will show you and we will discuss further uh, that involve a lot of concern about migratory birds and other species uh, alongside the, the, the mangrove fringes. Okay, just, just worth mentioning that there are a lot of sedimentary cliffs, which is a very characteristic feature of this area, which provides some challenges for response as they limit access uh, alongside the coastline. Another key uh, aspect is is uh, the 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 behavior, the geomorphological behavior of the the river mouths. Uh, all of them have mangroves associated, so we can easily imagine how this uh, develop in terms of wildlife. And all of them have uh, limitations to to access uh, between tides. So this puts a lot of logistical pressure under the response teams, not only the the, the primary uh, response teams, but also the, the secondary and the monitoring uh, guys who are uh, offshore because they could not access the, the cities, they could not access the, the, the peers uh, at any moment. So we had to be uh, everything, we had to have everything very well coordinated. And this motivate us to have a very strong uh, training program that I'll show you all also in the in a moment. Okay, uh, this area, as I told you before, uh, it has a lot of mangroves, uh, usually associated with the the backside of the river mouths. Some of them have already been impacted by human activity, especially uh, the the presence of cities, but others are very pristine. So. There are different levels of conservation, and we, we needed to, to consider also that uh, in terms of priorities. I will show also in the in the future some unit conservation units, but let's hold that thought for a moment. And let's check the 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 right uh, picture for me at least, because I know sometimes the software they mirror the, the picture. So it's the sea, the shrimp farms. There are a lot of shrimp farms. It's the the major production of Brazil in terms of of state, and also a very a very 
high potential for loss, considering that many of these cities depend economically on that. Okay, so just to make things uh, quite funnier, we have a lot of shallow waters reefs and corals. Uh, sometimes they they are in just shallow waters, but don't become exposed. Other times they have this these characteristics of becoming exposed in the low tides. And as I said before, mangroves. So uh, just to, to finish this topic, uh, working in the Northeast of Brazil is never easy. We learned that the hard way in 2019. But uh, in this project and in all, in all projects, we have the opportunity to plan accordingly. So we, we expected, we assessed all these vulnerabilities and we came up with what I'm going to show you, the response structure. This response structure it was based in different uh, layers. Uh, the first one, of course, was to control the any oil spill close to the source. So for this, we have our oil spill response vessels, which we consider them uh, enhanced since they have some fast water equipment that improve their efficiency in terms of sea conditions. Uh, these drones, they also had the had um, capability to deploy uh, chemical dispersion, although we are still uh, discussing how to properly do that, since we know there is a lot of eco ecotoxicological concern about supply and dispersants and the impact that can cause in the work colony. Yeah, it's always a tough question, uh, mainly because during the 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 moment we performed the exercise, there are a lot of birds uh, close to the coastline. And so we, we kept wondering in a real situation which would be the best option. But anyway, uh, the philosophy, I think, is to have everything available and to let the decision be, be made in the moment of the emergency with the best technical judgment that we can uh, offer. We have also uh, a very strong uh, monitoring capability. There is now a specialized aircraft that is able to be deployed in this area very quickly, and it allows us to track the oil much more efficiently, efficiently than we, we, we could do in the past. Of course, we also have the, the remote sensing coverage through the satellites, but uh, to be able to deploy a, a fast a platform like an aircraft is, is certainly a great improvement. Well, the wildlife capability was also uh, very strong. We have, uh, I'll show you this in a moment, but we have a, a regional center very close of the area that could be impacted by the project. And we also provided planning and logistics to be able to uh, set uh, temporary facilities to prepare for the impact. And I'll show you how we deploy that during the exercise. We also have some looking at the the all the forecasts of the oil. We not only focus on the the first impact, but we established a network of wildlife uh, management installations over the coast of the north coast of Brazil to be able to to uh, increase our response if necessary. And of course, we have some routine monitoring programs in place just to be able we understand the environment and we are able to 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 clear consider these over time in our future response plans. Uh, and as very well known here in Brazil, we have Petrobras has a, an environmental uh, defense center a network, which are response bases uh, spread over the coastline, also in the countryside of Brazil. And for this project, we deployed a specific response base in the very um, a very favorable uh, point in terms of vessels. We also, uh, instead of using just the concept of vessels of opportunity, we also managed to have this, some of these boats under full preparedness. So they are in a, in a city very close to the, to the project. So basically this was the structure, okay? So now we can, do you see, do you guys see my pointer? or not. Okay, so here we have just a, a geographical view. The project uh, is going to be held here in these blocks. Uh, these green areas are conservation units across the, 
the state of Ceará in Brazil. Here is a, just a representation that this new CDA base in 14. And this is an example of the fishery boats that are now available and ready for be for navigate and to deploy boom uh, in protection of these conservation units. Uh, looking further, we have here the oops, sorry, we have here also all the coastline that can be uh, impacted by the worst case scenario, which in Brazil uh, is entitled a modeling very conservative. It's it's over 60 days with any kind of measure being uh, taken to, to control the oil. So we we are able to see in detail uh, which is actually the area that can be impacted. So we have different CDAs, each of, of it uh, comprising one of these areas. And all of course, all these green areas are conservation units. So a very sensitive uh, region for us. Um, just to present, I'm go not going to, to detail this, but just to present you what is the CDA network. All of these icons are uh, are response bases over the, the country. All of them have equipment for uh, containment, recovery, storage, dispersant, in situ burning, wildlife rehabilitation. So we kept this in, in we keep this in, in full readiness and if necessary, we mobilize all, all of them to assess worst case scenarios. So the logical is, this is our, our tier two dash three to, to any project Petrobras has. And this, this is the wildlife rehabilitation and management mm -hmm. uh, structure. So we have, as I said before, uh, uh, what we call a CRD, which is a, a rehabilitation center in the, the city hall of Calcaia, <clears throat> sorry. We also have, uh, um, it's not a PSV, it's a fast boat, an offshore fast boat with capability to uh, rescue, monitor and stabilization of animals on board. So it's a dedicated vessel that is, is uh, kept in the capital of Ceará, Fortaleza and can be deployed to the to the blocks very quickly. It, it reaches 20 knots mm -hmm. in terms of navigation. And over the coast, we have other three facilities, stabilization units in strategical points of the coast, close to that conservation units that I mentioned before, and that were established in partnership with local institutions that know the area, know the environment, the environmental sensitivities, and of course, uh, I don't think that I'm best people, better people to know the specific animals uh, behavior and features than local institutions. So we set this agreement with them. And then in Berlin, we have also a second uh, rehabilitation center, mm -hmm. which is a, a bigger area. I'll show you in the next slide, uh, just some pictures of that. Uh, here, you can see that in Brazil, there are also other facilities Barbara, please, uh, you, you help uh, develop all of this, so please compliment me in any way. Uh, these facilities, they, they are kept in full preparedness as also. They support environmental programs as the beach monitoring program in Brazil that covers a large extension over the, the influence uh, of our activities of exploration production. And they can all be mobilized to help in our efforts uh, beyond uh, tier one uh, of any project. So there are a lot of specific and uh, specialized professionals that can be deployed. The CDAs, as I mentioned before, also had material. And if we, we need, uh, we have been working the last months very close to OSRL to be able to activate uh, the GARES uh, in, uh, service under the SLA agreement, the SLA, the SLA. And of course, that means we have also been discussing a lot with Ayuka, uh, since it's the Brazilian representative of this group. So uh, in this exercise, uh, we tested the Taiwan capability. So we are very focused in this area, but in a real response or in another different situation, we would certainly deploy this, this regional facilities or even the Tai tree if necessary. Um, this is, sorry, this is, uh, the 
Rehabilitation Center em Calcaia. It's kept by a, a Quasis, uh, mm -hmm. a good partner of us in this project. It also is uh, very renowned by its work in with manatees. So uh, very good professionals with very specialized knowledge. And here are some pictures of this, the kind of uh, structure they have. And this is the point where the animals were were to be uh, taken uh, to terrestrial transportation uh, after we have uh, rescued and stabilized them. Of course, uh, these are the permanent uh, installations. In an emergency, we would deploy as many uh, temporary installations as needed as the fort grows in time. Uh, so, uh, this was the structure we are willing to test. Uh, we agree agreed with our regulator, Obama, that uh, before uh, an environmental permit uh, be issued, we would need to to do a test. So Obama presented us with a scenario, and we prepared ourselves in a very strong way. Uh, before in the months before we trained all the all our M IMT incident management team, we trained the partners of these wildlife institutions. Uh, we involved different teams over the company, and here you can see very quickly uh, how this preparation stage was planned and executed by Petrobras. I, I, I always want like to share this because it allows everyone to think how each of your teams or if your companies uh, should would do it this uh, any company has its culture and can of course do in a different way and so we have some tabletop exercise in the beginning a lot of ics trainings because petrobras adopts this this management system and then we have some full deployment exercise the 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 wildlife uh, deployed partially during this exercise, but we managed to have uh, a very good learning and we correct and we adapt everything that we could. So we we, we arrived at the uh, uh, DISAPO, as we called the evaluation in Portuguese, uh, prepared. And of course, uh, just to mention, the, the, the scenario was not known by us. It was presented by Obama in the moment of the activation. And so here in the screen, I, I won't read it, but you have this scenario that was uh, uh, triggered by by Obama. Uh, so it's basically uh, a big spill that would impair these areas here in red. So we had we have indication of uh, impact at sea in this leftmost uh, conservation unit, and we also have some uh, possibility of oil touching the coast in these two red dots. But of course, since these are, are very close to each other and since modeling is always uh, tricky when you get some more close to the to the coast, we adopted the, the uh, conservative approach. So we simulate uh, response in all these areas, uh, no matter that only a, a certain unit would be impaired. We exercise all of them to be able to, to train our people for a real response. And uh, another premise was that no offshore capability was assessed. So we really focus on nearshore containment and protection and also wildlife response. So uh, we established two, uh, we established first, I'm uh, sorry, uh, an IMT based on ICS, I want to tell this. So, uh, a big uh, uh, IMT. Uh, in total, I think we we coordinated in this exercise more than 800 people, seven to 800 people, if I'm not mistaken, but this number appears in a moment. And we decided also to establish two command posts. One, uh, main, one the, the main command post in Rio, uh, which was uh, held in Petrobras headquarters. It was mobilized uh, in a very quick way because it, it, it's it's used for any kind of emergency that we have, not only with uh, IP or, or oil spills. So people who are entitled to establish, to, to make it work, are very used to this kind of mobilization. So in less than four hours, we had this, this some, we had the team start to, to pull with this. 
And we also decide to establish an advanced command post in Ceará. So we we took a little while to to establish this because we need to rent a hotel to come up with all the technological structure and also to to movement people from all over Brazil. So here, just this picture, you're seeing the part of the operation teams. Each of these guys uh, in peacetime, they they are located in different countries and regions of Brazil. So there was a big effort uh, of logistics to mobilize anyone who was uh, needed to be here as soon as possible. And of course, in these command posts and as advanced command posts, uh, one doesn't expect to to have as much technological facility as you saw in the last slide. So many of of the management was done by paper, and that's was that's fine. I think every response uh, goes like that. So uh, oh, here are the numbers. So we we mobilize a lot of equipment and vehicles and boats, uh, and especially people. Uh, as I said, more than seven hundred people. Uh, more than I think the 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 number that the two numbers that really impressed me are the numbers of vessels, uh tops 55 and personal because it's it was very uh challenging to make these two words uh work together. Not all the vessels were adequate for the jobs they need to be done. So we had to search for other ones and we have to to manage to mobilize a lot of them to be able to protect the conservation units in due time. As I mentioned before, some aircrafts, uh, we use the drones, technological uh, communications facilities to, to transmit everything in real, real time when necessary. And because there was a lot of personal, of course, the, the, health, the health side of the emergency was also a priority for us. Uh, here is uh, just uh, uh, an insight of how the coastal protection was performed. So uh, here are representations of the, the booms being deployed by by these vessels of opportunity and some of the vessels kept in readiness. Or in the, at the sea, outside of the polygon of the conservation units. And here, uh, the points where the, the guys from CDA were uh, establishing the protections to the mangroves, to the areas more more sensitive, and also uh, preparing for cleanup since there was an expectation for oil to reach this area. Um, I won't go into detail. Will be in this in this material that we will provide our SRL to to make available for all. But just for you to to have a feeling of how much equipment and how how many boats, how these task force at sea were established. Here is a tactical plan. We we don't cap we don't keep them in our response plan, but we keep them updated uh, uh, in, in house. And the reason for that is because the environment changed a lot over over seasons. So what we did we have done here was uh, update our tactical plan in the moment of the activation. So a SCAT team uh, enter to this this position uh, update it was good so we deployed the equipment and each area that has to be protected had this kind of approach with this equipment uh, sizing so uh, this this part of the response went very well and here is a major a general view of the wildlife task force uh, each its symbol it seems like a tent it was a stabilization uh, uh, unit. And so we put up some tents with equipment, with material in strategic points where we have access to, to facilities, to utilities, and I have good access to roads, especially to be able to transport the animals. And we, of course, uh, established them over the area to impact. It was a first response. So we know the the animals. They they not only concentrate. They they never concentrate only on where the oil reach the coastline. So these stabilization units were the the first approach to be able to properly treat these animals. We first add. We also have uh, two different types of task force in order to monitor and search for these animals. So first there was a there were several teams who were. Uh, performing terrestrial uh, monitoring 
over these colored areas, the green, orange, and pink. So these these people are just going uh, over the areas and receiving some communications from the community, from other stakeholders about possible oiled animals and trying to direct to this point as soon, as quick as possible, providing with the, the rescue and then taking them to the stabilization units. At sea, we had the same approach. And for this, we used uh, some vessels uh, like those I showed you before. So we had these, these uh, areas of inspection. And in Capuí uh, city, there was a particular concern because of two uh, features that we, we identified during the environmental studies of the project. First, uh, Aquasis, uh, a partner in wildlife rehabilitation. It kept, keeps uh, a manatee uh, sea tank. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, that it used to rehabilitate animals uh, and provide them with uh, release to the to the to the nature. So it's a very very good program. I, I strongly recommend all to look for further detail into the internet because it's very interesting. It's, it's quite admirable in my opinion. So we kept a few boats here to be able to 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 do with these sensitivities. And the other one, there is an area here, which is a, a, a seagrass bank called Banco dos Cajuais, which is a hot spot for nesting and also for feeding, not only of uh, feeding of manatees, of course, and nests of seabirds. So it demanded a, a different approach using secondary response. So we deployed some, some vessels, some boats in this area to be able to also engage this. And of course, uh, we didn't activate it, the gowers uh, because the exercise was limited to three days. So in these three days, we are busy uh, putting this structure together and working with our Taiwan partners mm -hmm. and also Ayuka, who has who was helping us. Uh, uh, I think in this, I think it's worth mentioning all. We, we work with Ayuka, Mineral, and Aquasis. They all have different tasks over the, the, the exercise, and they all help us a lot, and not only at field, but also in the command post, helping us plan and establish the response actions for the, for the next days. Uh, oh, here, let me see if it will work. This is the a drone uh, take from the from the aquasi sea tank. So we we protected with uh, uh, some wounds. You can see the manatees inside. This is an expansion of the tank that will be held in the future. So in another exercise, this boom would certainly be deployed outside of this of this area. And because we we had these animals, uh, the sensitive structures, you can see it's it's flow a floating truck structure with nets. Uh, in the water column, we took preventive measures to try the most to stop any, to avoid any kind of damage in this area. So no anchors were deployed, uh, no access from CDA team with, with small boats were allowed without a presence of uh, a, a professional from Aquasis to be able to guide them and to provide assistance in case of anything uh, and things goes wrong, we can we need to plan for for this kind of of countermeasure. Okay, so moving on, we have the protections in the mangroves and the river, the river mouths. Here is a capui. You can see the sea farms, uh, in the background. You can see some mangroves. In this case, the mangroves were highly impacted because of the sea farms. Here is another conservation unit. Uh, where you can see a very interesting dynamic we, in which the, these, all these darker areas, areas they become uh, wet when the, the high, high tide uh, comes. And also a very, very interesting challenge because there is a road, this is a cliff, so we have a very narrow area to work and also there are some nesting of, some nests of birds here that we need to be aware of. So, these are the coastal protections. Here, 
is just two pictures of uh, sketching, discussing with uh, a regulator representative about what what was done, doing, what were what were the assessments, what kind of information was provided. As I mentioned before, they helped us keep an eye not only at wildlife, but also uh, to update the response strategies. And here, the environmental agents that were uh, mobilized to help uh, the cleanup activities. Uh, you can see at the beach are a lot of brown, brown and dark uh, algas, like sargassum. Uh, it's very common in this in this area. So what these guys were doing, were simulating, of course, is the pre cleanup before the oil arrives. So we we mitigate uh, the amount of waste that is generated here. Uh, here we have a picture of the the vessels. Uh, so. This is a, a an an insight of a, a sea test force that was protecting the uh, any conservation unit. So there are a lot of vessels at sea, like you can see in the video. They are also uh, positioned and waiting for the oil to come. Of course, it was not uh, their uh, job to go after the oil, but they they were indicated to be to keep position, keep position to protect the the the, the conservation units, and we had it so. This, this, sorry, we have so this kind of uh, vessel. It's a complete oil spill response vessel, a PSV with a covered busters trying to do a sweep uh, response. And so this, this is hunting oil. This would be hunting oil in a real situation. Here is very small, but if you pay uh, attention to these white boxes here, this is the wildlife uh, fast PSV uh, boat. Fast boat, I think it's better to call that. So we have two containers uh, able to provide rehabilitation and rehabilitation, I think, depreterization, the oiling of these animals. And it was also uh, helping the, the effort in terms of monitoring. Um, another other pictures of the stabilization units, as I told you. So they these are were all. Uh, temporary uh, facilities that were put together by the logistical teams of Petrobras. In the left bottom, you see uh, some of the injects that were presented in this exercise. So small uh, plastic animals simulating different species and different uh, places. So as soon as, this, as these animals were identified, uh, we have specialized teams performing the rescue, taking them to the stabilization units and uh, doing the first add, the, the initial care of the animals. Of course, a big challenge here is the response time because not always these animals were identified with, with easy. Sometimes they were very, uh, very high in spots. So uh, there is, of course, a training uh, opportunity to improve. This, this kind of time, the response time. But in general, uh, it was all, all the animals, or most of the animals were taken care. And it was, uh, as I said, a tier one response where we're establishing the structure, the tendency, any response that's over time, this, this, this kind of difficult, they, they are solved and things start going more, more, in fact, so less turbulence, I think. So uh, I think finally, but not not least, there is, as I said before, a lot of community in these areas. So we need to perform <clears throat> stakeholders engagement. So to talk, to present them what's happening, how can they help, which are the recommendations, how to behave if they see oil. And of course, it's a very, it's a very interesting uh, job because we learn it a lot from them they know the place better than any company or any uh, agents, state agents. So it was great to, to be able to, to interact with them and also to, to hear what they have to say. Uh, good, good example, I think, for any, any response Petrobras will be involved in the, in the future. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, we had a, a very... A very long discussion with Adam about this project, but we take uh, we provided the state agencies and other environmental agencies 
to to be aware of the exercise, to be aware of the project. Many of them put some concerns, we consider them. So it's also uh, a practice to, to do in, in peacetime. And so what we learned, this is just a very brief summary. So don't take this for, for the whole list of points of improvement, but uh, I think they are the, the main ones that we, we should consider here. Well, first of all, the training to, to I think the, the, any institution has to consider and should not take for granted the amount of effort, I mean, time, energy, financial resource to be put to prepare a response team. So we we actually uh, provided uh, our leaderships, uh, our operational leaderships, I mean, not the, the routine ones, with the amount of hours close to Sunday. We finish it in a Wednesday. By the end of Tuesday, we had all the protections in place, all the vessels at sea. And by the end of Wednesday, even the wildlife structure, all that was was uh, mobilized and was operation operational. So uh, it's a good effort, a lot of equipment for just two to three days. So uh, the response plan proved it to be uh, robust. Uh, as I said before, engagement with the stakeholders and the communities, it, it showed again to be a key factor for any emergency. Uh, we 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 use a different approach in this exercise. We train a lot of local people, we hired them, and we trained them not only to perform uh, basic actions of cleanup, but we trained them to perform more complex actions to protection, to coastal protection, to response. Uh, and they res and they provide a great result. So it's nice because now that area has a, a database with lots of people training and that can be mobilized to improve the response. And of course, it's a, it's a kind of a social legacy for, for that community since all this training, training that they received they provide them with formal certificates that can help them search for other uh, job opportunities. Many times things that they have never uh, thought before. Well, we we used in, in this project also uh, the spill impact mitigation assess tool, which was the previous was previous known by NIBA. So we use that to help us develop uh, the best response techniques for, for this scenario. We applied in a peacetime. We didn't apply at the moment of the response and it helped us build the plan. So many of the things that we face it, we have access, ass assessed it before with the use of this tool. So it seems that we are going to be using it in the future again and again. And of course, SCAT, which is a, a, a short for shoreline cleanup assessment technique. It's now becoming more popular in Brazil. And it will help us, uh, as I said, to identify and to update information. But we still need to, to take a step to perform SCAT with, odd, with a multidisciplinary team. Uh, right now, we're using environmental professionals, sometimes with response guys from, from CDA. We need to, to make these teams uh, a group of people that involve wildlife guys, uh, some agencies, and maybe even community representatives. So uh, we have a, still a road to, to increase, to improve, but it's, it's already providing us with good results. Well, we used drones and satellite internet to communicate and it, it worked fantastically. It doesn't need to be anything much complex to, to work. So basically we, we split the teams, we gave each leader uh, the responsibility to organize how its teams would communicate, establish uh, time, times to, to, to be, uh, we establish some time uh, limits to, for these teams to provide reports. So we won't uh, interact with them all the time, asking for information, which can be in somehow a jeopardize of their efforts, their energy. And most of the time we use WhatsApp as a very quick way to to connect with people. In the places where we don't have uh, cell phone coverage, we provide satellite 
uh, internet. So the guys would still be able to to come in. Keep the the risks, the safety risks under control by being able to communicate with them and being more efficient in solving situations that arise in, in a real response. Uh, one of the things that we need to to keep doing all the time is training together with our our partners, the NGOs involved, the the contractors, the universities. So everybody uh, has a clear perspective of what a response is, what can be provided in the first moment, which are the, the constraints. So anyway, it's a, a permanent effort, but it needs to be done. And we we, we only succeed in that by exercising. So I, we, not me uh, just, but we in Petrobras, we are more than convinced that as, as if we do many exercises, we'll be much more prepared. It's a lot of work to prepare this, this big exercise, a lot of time and energy uh, allocated, but it provides us with a confidence and uh, a pre preparedness that maybe others, other solutions don't. So it's very worth it. And Mary, I end my, my presentation. I'm sorry, I have no idea how, how much time I have talked. I'm sorry if I have uh, went over my limits, but uh, we will be here for any questions you have, me and Barbara. So uh, I pass the, the word to, to Mariana again. Thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo, for your presentation. It was really good. It was really good. Thank you so much. Uh, we just received a comment here just before Viviani start uh, her presentation. Um, and it's from Tuan. There is no question, just a comment. Probably the questions will start at, after the Viviane presentation. And it's for you, Horace, Rodrigo. I'm always impressed with the level of preparedness of Petrobras. As a Brazilian, I know how strict and strong our environmental authorities are. So this could be no different. Still, it is always great to see how robust and omnibus these plans are. I'm also happy how you are now counting on local partners and specialists for consultants and development of plans and services which are specific to these areas. Have to also be part of it as OSRL. So this is the comment of Tuan. And Rodolfo, congratulations us for the presentation and especially for Petrobras for the work development. So Vivi, it's all yours now. So good morning, everybody. Thank you to be here and thank you uh, OSRL for the invitation. Um, so I'm gonna talk about, uh, today I'm gonna talk about IUCA. It's participation on Petrobras exercise, the one that Rodrigo just talked about now and a little bit about Gowers, uh, as Ayuka is one of the organization's members. Um, so it's gonna be quickly, I promise. Uh, Ayuka is specialized in planning, management, and response to any environmental emergencies, including oil spill. So as you may know, and let's go to the next. Yeah. Ayuka has three, three rehabilitation centers or three bases. The main one is in Praia Grande, is the head office here. I can you see my mouse, my pointer? Yes, thank you. Uh one in Rio das Ostras, and now we have uh one in Peru. So very quickly again, we I'm gonna go just a quick list about our service services. Uh, we do our wildlife emergency management. We do our wildlife rescue and rehabilitation. We write and prepare the wildlife protection plans. We do and write the plans for bird management in platforms. We perform training on our services and environ environmental studies. 
wildlife surveys and we participate and help to, to prepare drills and exercises. So um, just going now into the, the presentation, before we get uh, to the point uh, of the exercise, I just wanna give you guys a very quick overview about the Petrobras and IUCAS contract. So the main objective of this contract is uh, IUCA has to, to be uh, prepared for wildlife and preparedness and response, response services in, in drills and exercise um, from oil spills or other substances. And we also have to give operational support for activities that requires any wildlife management. Um, this contract, uh, for, for us to be engaged in this contract, we have four wildlife specialists uh, with full time dedicated to this contract and another 14 specialists that could be uh, activated according to the Petrobras needs for drills and real emergencies. Um, we, in this contract, we just, we don't do a, only um, oil and gas, but we are also uh, covering all Petrobras segments where we include, where it includes fauna, it includes mining, refineries and offshore activities. So, and on the top of that, as Rodrigo mentioned in his presentation, we also, they have the envir envir environmental defense um, centers. So we have some wildlife response equipment on these, in these environmental defenses called CDA from the Portuguese. Um, so we, those equipments are distributed in five states to help uh, with the wildlife response. So the states are Sao Paulo, Santa Catarina, Rio de Janeiro, Bahia, and Amazonas. Try to cover uh, along the Brazilian coast from south to north. So um, going into the... Ayuka's participation in the Apple. Uh, so Rodrigo showed you guys how many people they had to mobilize to do this exercise and how much time they needed to, to dedicate to it. And we Ayuka's participation was, uh, we were in the command post and responding the field. In total, we had like 10 wildlife specialists mobilized for this. Uh, one specialist was uh, acting in the section planning um, in the command post in Rio. As Rodrigo mentioned, it was the main command post. Um, and the other, open, I'm just changing the slide. And the other nine wildlife specialists were uh, based on in, in the field. So, uh, our main activity over there was perform the monitoring and when necessary, uh, hazing. But I will talk a little bit further about that. So for the field monitoring, we had, um, the, it was divided in aerial survey, terrestrial survey and onboard survey. For the aerial survey, we had one specialist that was based in Fortaleza as the flights were um, taking off from, from Fortaleza. And the, uh, the exercise was performed uh, down here in Icapuí. Icapuí is that the name? Yeah, where the circle, the circle in red here. So it's quite far. And so yes, yeah, so we had one specialist for the, the aerial survey. And...
I want to change, I'll change it. So just to give an overview what the aerial survey could register. So the manatees, the, the, the one that Rodrigo showed in his presentation, the video, like protected areas, mangroves and mouth rivers, and, and then a group of dolphins. It's just to illustrate, you know, the, the, the things were uh, registered as in the ICS forms and everything, but here I'm not gonna get into these details, just giving you guys an overview. Uh, for the terrestrial monitoring, uh, part of the terrestrial monitoring was performed by car and part was uh, walking because there were very sensitive areas that the car couldn't get. And, and the hazing was used, this is an example here uh, of the horn, um, but it's like just for testing. Actually, we are not hazing any wildlife. There was no purpose on that on the exercise, but just to test the equipment. And here was the... Um, are uh, some species registered. Um, this monitoring was performed in the, mangueza, in the mangrove, Barra Grande, and Ponta Grossa Beach. Both areas are considered protected, uh, and it's a very important site for breeding. It's a very important birds breeding site. And as Rodrigo mentioned as well, the manatees feeding area and everything. So for the boat survey, um, we had two boats dedicated to wildlife monitoring. And then that's just for you to, to have an idea uh, of the, the wildlife and the, the register that was for the, his, the wildlife registered over there. That's a, a really beautiful way. So yes, that was our main, main, task force performed in this exercise. And now I'm gonna get you into the, um, the galleries by itself. Actually, I forgot to mention the beginning, something very important. I'm just gonna talk now. You guys know that uh, any, any oil spill response, it, it is classified in levels, no? Like tiers or tires, I, I used to say tiers. Tier one, when the the lo it uses local resource, and then tier two, when you have to mobilize local plus national or regional resources, and tier three, when we have to deploy um, international, we have to mobilize international resources. So on those levels, Ayuka's contract with Petrobras, we go until tier two. We don't get to tier three. Okay, so just for you to understand a little bit. So now talk a little bit about Gowers. So what is Gowers? I don't know if everyone that is in here have heard about Gowers, but Gowers is a network of wildlife organizations partnering to provide prof professional tier three, tier three oiled wildlife assessment services. Uh, a, a total of 10 organizations are part of this network, and IUCA is the only one in Latin America that represents, uh, is the only institution in Latin America that, it belong, that is a member of Gowers. So we have institutions from um, North America, from Europe, from, from New Zealand. So it's a total of 10 institutions. So the main, the main goal now of Gowers is to provide true OSRL um, uh, assessment, uh, wildlife assessment services for um, oil spill or environmental emergencies. Let me just go quick over here. Oops, 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 I just lost now presentation here. So how does it work? How Gowers assessment team is, is prepared? So it is through our OSRL, it is a ready to deploy service. 
It's available 24 seven and it goes and do the assess on the grounds. Um, once we are activated through our SRL, a team of four members, uh, I'm gonna talk about these four members a little bit later, but just for you to have an idea how it works. A team of four members go to the incident scenario, go to the incident play site, and, and it's going, this team is going to evaluate the scenario and advise the client uh, if it should be, if should be a, a response on tier three level or not. So yeah, this assessment team, it, it advises the client how the client should uh, conduct his uh, wildlife response from that point. So, and then as I said, uh, it, we are activated through our SRL. So the four members that uh, composes the assessment team they are four specialists and they are divided in, we have one specialist that can act in operation or planning section, and it was going to work with the assessment and the, with the IMT in the command post, um, advising the client to doing the correct do documentation, uh, doing the, all the, the tasks that he's supposed to do in the command post. And there are, the second, a specialist is a vet, and it's um, a vet that's experienced in the OSP response, and and it knows all the needs of the animals that are going or are impacted by the oil or the other substance, and it's going to to advise the client to in what kind of uh, resources uh, the client will need will, will need to to do the right response over there. The third, um, the third member is a field and capture specialist. What this specialist is supposed to do? It goes to the field, uh, do a wildlife species reconnaissance, and um, and it is going to analyze the scenario and see if it's possible to do any capture if it's needed or if it should use any kind of hazing to avoid the animals to get oiled or anything. So this person is going to analyze the scenario and try to advise, and try not, it's going to advise the client how it should be, what should be done. And then the last one is a rehab and a facility specialist that works with really close to the, to the vet because this, this person, this member is going to analyze all the facilities present in the area um, and everything that is needed to build a facility if, it, if there is none and what could be done, what the size of the facilities needed to be, to be developed and everything. So it's a four uh, member, uh, four members that have all this knowledge in this area to advise the client. So I think that's all I have from now. And I would like to ask Frankie, if you have anything to add from, to what I said about Gowers and our OSRL, it's difficult to say this, <laughs> uh, feel free to, to add. That's all for me, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Vivi. So, guys, it's open the question time if you want to make some question or if you are too shy just to speak, you can write this on the chat and the presenters will be more than happy to answer everything. Ask a question. Uh, uh, not a question, Mariana, but can I add something? For sure. <laughs> Hello. Hello everyone, I'm Valeria. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate everybody on their presentations. It's been wonderful to see. Thank you very much, Rodrigo and Viviani. And I'd like to add that, first of all, I, I wish the industry had the same vision as Brazil 
adding adding Petrobras, the the industry as a whole, but also the authorities to to the vision that we have for oil wildlife response in Brazil, and the importance about developing the tier ones and the tier twos is is a great opportunity i think for the worldwide industry to see what is possible and what can be done with the right support and the right opportunities so we as interested parties and stakeholders as you can as you can call it we have a challenge to keep training our teams and developing exercises so so big i think that what's what's impressive with the petrobras presentation is the the scale of the exercise that we had and it is always an opportunity to add different different authorities and different different organizations when we talk about oiled wildlife response organizations and such as the gowers obviously and the Adding to Vivi's presentation, I think it's important to say that the Gowers, the Gowers team service can be included since the planning phase for exercises such as this. And there are always opportunities to add to the complexities and add to the fact that we, we as the Gowers, we can um, also run our internal processes before and during an exercise like this so we can we can always be included and here's so i have uh, two hats um Valer valeria uh, speaking as ayuka's director but also as one of the gowers members and and gowers founders we are we are here to remind that gowers can be utilized since since every single phase of an exercise and there's always things that we can all add as professionals. And I think that the main, main thing about this presentation is um, to remind ourselves how important it is to, to have professional advice during, during exercises, being small exercises or large scale exercises like this. So thank you. Thank you, Valeria. I really appreciate your words. <laughs> uh, we have a question here. I think it's for Barbara, but I, I just think uh, how how many teas are rehabilitated? Re re Let me say that I don't know. Uh, I know that there were two animals on the rehabilitation process to be released into the white again. But in total, I guess more than 10. And I know that a guy called Umberto, a biologist, a colleague of mine, is here in this meeting and probably he knows better than me. I will ask him to write on the on the on the chat if he knows how many in total but i know that there are two animals in at capui in the place that rodrigo had showed and there are more about uh 15 i guess on Kauka at calcaia that they are in swimming pools and later on they can go back to nature uh, Barbara, if you allow me to, to answer, we released two animals in Ceará, so Pintada and um, uh, Mirim, but in the area is circulating more animals because in Rio Grande do Norte, another state, we released another two animals and they are like circulating the area. So, uh, But during the exercise, we had these two, in the certain the area in uh, Icapuí, there we the acclimatation area, we have four. So during the exercise, we had four inside this uh, facility and in two circulating in the area. 
but in Aquasis, the um, uh, Marine Mammal Center in uh, Calcaia, we have around, I think, uh, 13 or 14 animals um, doing uh, rehabilitation. Thank you, Humberto. Thank you, Humberto. So, I think we don't have any more questions. I'd like to thank you, everyone, for the time, for the presenters, for accepting the invitation. You can talk, Rodrigo, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for the questions, but in this kind of events nowadays, everybody's, as you said, very shy. Just... If one person asks, everybody asks, but it's, it's okay. It's how things go this day. I just like to to comment, guys, uh, an impression I have as a responder and a environmental professional. I agree with Valeria in when they when she, she says that we are much more well positioned as a country than most of the planet in wildlife affairs. Uh, it's something to be very proud of our legislation, our agencies, our companies. Everybody's involved, definitely. But I think we 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 could also uh, benefit from improving this discussion to expand these limits. Nowadays, as I see, our wildlife uh, network and structure and planning is very focused in the energy industry. And something that we learned here in Petrobras is that sometimes we have wildlife concerns with other kinds of accidents or risks that we that does not involve oil, such as dams, like we have uh, that, those accidents in Sobradinho, in Mariana, uh, forest fires, that is a huge concern for, for Brazil as a country. And these, these public stakeholders, they don't interact with with our, our network, they don't interact with our national structure. Also, we don't usually see uh, exercise, uh, looking at the topic of our EBNA here, exercise beyond the individual emergency plans, uh, using these, these, these integrations. So the, we have the, the area plans that involve a lot of ports and now is being applied to the offshore. We have the National Contingency Plan that has never uh, held a, a big field uh, table, a big field exercise beyond tabletop. I, I think there are some colleagues from Obama here. So I think we need to keep uh, doing uh, the good job that we have done in, in the oil industry. Definitely, it has a huge potential for impact. But I don't see any reason why we should limit this vision to the oil, to the energy segment. I think there are other other industries, other aspects of our society that can hugely benefit from having a, a, a broader program of wildlife response, management, and rehabilitation. It's just something that we thought, that, to think, I think. Uh, by each day, I, I feel confident that we need to discuss response in Brazil, not as individual stakeholders, but some someday we will need to take a step to to come up with a, an association that can uh, support these institutions that can provide them financial uh, means to to be able to continue doing their job and that allow an access for many other players than the industry per se. I think there is a huge room for improvement. Looking at other examples like. Uh, Norway, California, Australia. So it's just a reflection. As it's not always that we take the time to to have this kind of discussion. But that's it. Thank you, Mari, for the invitation again. Thank you, guys. See you soon. I hope. Valeria, your hands raised. You can talk again. I know. Thank you. And I would just like to add to Rodrigo's comment. And I definitely agree with you, Rodrigo. I think that we are, we as a country, we have a a great um, a great framework for environmental protection. And the fact that we have oiled wildlife response legislation and and the whole framework that we have as an example, we can see we can already see the um, 
this this model going into different industries like the mining industry and to and even to fire response i think that we we and i would love to hear from ibama on this cynthia if you could add or um other colleagues from ibama if you could add but i can already see and we ayuka have already participated in other wildlife management responses that were not oil spills and we we know the need and we know that it's possible to help and to develop and to organize emergency response directed to wildlife in in other subjects in other areas so totally agree and we are as brazil as a country we are in the right path we're going the right way thank you mariana Thank you. And just to summarize, because we are finalizing our Wildlife Week, and I'd like to thank you all to participate. We had an overview of the Wildlife Contingency Plan. We had our first speaking Spanish webinar this week. We have now, we are having now the incorporating wildlife into oil spill exercise. We had some exercise, practical exercise. So I'd like to thank you all, all the efforts that we have this week. And I just uh, to, to make uh, everyone know, all the videos were recorded. So it will be available in the Orasorial YouTube channel next week. And for those who sign up, we receive a link. And is it so thank you so much for the time and for the questions for the thoughts that we have here i really appreciate and for me it's a pleasure to be here facilitating this meeting thank you all thank you mariana thank you everyone thank you bye thank you vivi thank you